All right, well, I am here again with uh, Stephen Waldron for um, uh, Aquarium Zen, and this time we're going to talk about something that is aquarium related and that the roots and everything feed up, but also I see some air plants and things, and this is what I would call a living wall, but I want to get your take on it, your... Uh, yeah, let's just hear about the background of it. Yeah, so uh, a few years ago I got really obsessed with these vertical gardens, the living walls. Sure. Um, there's an artist in France, uh, Patrick Blanc, who does these great you know, facades on the sides of buildings and uh, they're just all planted. And it th it's a really fantastic way to incorporate uh, horticulture and design on buildings and spaces. And it's, it's becoming more and more popular. And um, one, the way the living wall systems work is that you have a vertical matrix of some kind of moisture retention material, usually like a plastic felt. Um, and then there's water, and then there's a reservoir below it, and there's water and nutrients so this, being pumped up. This, did you construct this or what? This is just repurposed um, material from, I can't remember what exactly this is used for, but it's basically a plastic. They take uh, wa you know, water bottles or or soft drink bottles and plastic bottles and recycle them and create this like felt material. Cool. Um, so and then you, uh, things yeah, reusing things cool. too. So Patrick Blanc discovered that using this recycled plastic felt material was a great growing matrix for these vertical gardens. And so beyond that, you also have a reservoir of water and nutrients that gets pumped up and recirculated through the through the vertical garden. So I always thought it'd be cool to incorporate an aquarium, use the aquarium as your reservoir totally. for, for watering the plants. Um, so that's how this wall started and it ran like that for a couple years and it's very beautiful. But, you know, it was my first sort of um, version of this, first iteration, and I, I struggle with some issues with getting the irrigation tubing right. And so what eventually happened is I had to shut off the pump system so there's no water circulating through this wall at the moment. So is this so just all capillary? The, uh, these plants actually have thrown their roots all the way down behind the wall oh, into wow. the aquarium and same thing with these guys and then this area was actually quite bare for a long time right. and I just added these tillandsias which aren't rooting they're just mounted on air, the wall. Air they're plants, air, plant, air plants yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, so that's basically it. That one stands out a lot to me. What, what is this? This is a here? type of bromeliad. It's a ground-dwelling bromeliad. I think they're Brazilian. That's um, beautiful. Yeah, and they, they're they almost like succulents. They're kind of a in between an air plant and a succulent. Okay. So they're very durable. Uh, it does have a little soil back there that I have to water once a week. Okay. So, so, this, week. so we hand water this now. Okay. Once a week, I just hose this whole thing down. And that's enough to keep everyone happy. But these are all very durable plants. Like we have peace lilies down here. Sure. And uh, the, the tillandsias, the air plants, they're actually collecting humidity from the air, um, moisture from the air. And like I said, that ficus pumila, the biny guy in the back, yeah. that's throwing its roots all the way down to the fish tank. Yeah, so if you guys look in here, sorry about the glare, let's see if we can do anything about that. Maybe I can poke around here. You guys can see that the roots come down in and basically there's still fish and uh, it can function like a very, I mean, you could pack this with fish because yeah. the nitrates are going to get just sucked out. Yeah, right? ideally you'd want this to be your nitrogen sort of engine for your living wall. Right. And that would be a great way to do it. So um, I, I've seen people, and it, when I was living up in Bellingham, we had a tilapia tank, mm -hmm. and we had the duckweed, which my friends ate, but I would not eat that stuff. <laughs> but they'd eat the algae, the uh -huh. duckweed, and then they'd have tilapia and catfish, which to me were just like mucky, gross fish. Uh -huh. But it produced so much nitrogen that then they grew strawberries and other stuff. But they yeah. had a pump system. Yeah, exactly. So I've, I've seen it with permaculture, but it's so much more. Uh, uh, what is uh, the the Japanese the wabi sabi? I think it's called, where it's mm -hmm. just the imperfection of seeing what happens. Yeah. Uh, Sure. It kind of reminds me of that. Like, does the wall kind of sometimes have a life of its own? Where what takes over where? And yeah, exactly. Like well, like I said, this was initially planted 
with a whole diversity of plants and it was irrigated from oh. the aquarium and then unfortunately those all died off so uh -huh. these are the survivors you know this vine on the top and then these plant the maiden hair fern That's and then the um, peace lily are the survivors of the original planting and then I put and then there's a few philodendrons and oh, then yeah. and then the uh, the air plants are like a recent addition okay. so yeah so yeah you are seeing so I, I always joke that this is the post-apocalyptic living wall because this, <laughs> this is what they right. look like when you just have a few survivors that just take over instead of a diversity of delicate species. Now, is this moss alive? Or? That moss is just florist moss. It's dead. Sure. Um, and it's just like a filler to kind of keep, keep, you know, you don't see the background material. And also, when after we humidity moisten this, it'll, it'll retain the humidity. That's great. So it's, That's great. it actually smells kind of nice. I, I yeah. like the smell of it. Once you hydrate it, it kind of gives it a fresh So if someone foresty were to do smell. this at home, what kind of lighting with um, I just you know luckily I had this track lighting and it was already installed in this zone so I didn't have to do anything but um, it depends on the plants you so, know so I, like it's house plant yeah it really depends you know some house plants are very tolerant of low light so you really have to tailor it to your um, condition growing conditions okay uh, well. but I found these track lightings with these spot LED lighting yeah. to be sufficient to grow okay. most anything yeah. uh, most of the house plants are pretty adaptable they tend to like lower light they're Sure. jungle species that found in deep shade and you know do well right so yeah. things yeah. like philodendrons and um uh what else? i don't know you probably do syndapsis although that might be kind of weird i don't know you really want to, air plants are great so you want to just do your research on yeah some of the hardier types of house plants and <laughs> and experiment like anything the more you get into it the more you'll learn the more research you do the more success you'll have and did you have a theme going in here like south american no no Russia, no, no it like was that? it was just purely just I just wanted, I just really wanted a riot of vegetation erupting out of the wall. That's I like all I that. was going for, you know, just an explosion of plants and a just... A riot of vegetation. Yeah, I just... Like, that's going to be the hashtag on this. this yeah, window. I mean, it's just for me, it, I, I love jungles and so I just wanted to create a little jungle. Now, what is this plant here? That's a type of maiden's hair fern. This and this beautiful. actually uh, colonized itself. So this came in wow. as, as spores from some other plant. And I never planted this guy. So that's, that's awesome. kind of the fun thing is to see what just is going to pop up naturally. If When this was moistened, when this was constantly irrigated and the wall was moist all the time, uh -huh. I was getting little mosses colonizing and things like that. Right. Yeah. People don't realize the, the amount of, whether it's micro crustaceans or mosses or fungi or plants, like our air, our water. Yeah, it's there's everywhere. a lot. Yeah, just, it's, it's fascinating. You... You give light and water to some substrate yeah. and a little bit of a little bit of nutrients and then life will just start appearing sure and yeah. uh so you can yeah it's it's just kind of fun to see what happen i've always wanted to do one of these outdoors and just see like the the native ferns that yeah. would colonize and native mosses just like see what wall yeah just that. see what would colonize without you just just moisten it with water and nutrients and then see what would happen yeah. I, I have a feeling it'd be very interesting. So yeah, definitely. So there's there's tons of potential for this kind of horticulture. We're just what, what, thinking outside the box, getting really creative, and just having fun. When I was in uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport uh, about five years ago, I saw uh, how do you say that artist's name again? Or Patrick that? Blanc. Patrick. Yeah, Blanc. he's really well known. So he did a like 120 foot long display in the airport. That's right. Yeah, and I heard about that. Just it's pretty incredible if you guys Google the picture. Yeah, he had, he's changing. an interesting guy. He actually started out as an aquarium hobbyist. He really? was really into cryptocorn species. <laughs> and his apartment in Paris is actually, the floor is an aquarium. It's a transparent floor full of fish. And Wouldn't it be nice? It's great. Yeah, so I would Google that too. It's fascinating. He has like birds flying around. There's plants everywhere. Wow. It's wow. it's pretty magical. He's an amazing guy. That's really so cool. he he to me he's on par with like Takashi Amano, and that not only did he master a creative art form using living plants and yeah. such, but he developed it himself. You know, it's his invention. That's awesome. From just he, I think he was a PhD researcher in Southeast Asia, and 
started noticing all these plants growing on vertical faces sure. and thought, well, we could incorporate that into horticulture. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much yeah. for sharing. Yeah, and, my pleasure. And again, as I always want to uh, do a shout out to your shop. Where yeah, we're at Aquarium you? Zen, 920 Northeast 64th Street, <laughs> Seattle. Yeah, in Seattle. Yeah, and, or in uh, Seattle. When you're in Seattle, come in here because it's not only uh, a shop with reasonably priced plants and fish, but there's a lot of really amazing uh, tanks and uh, ever-changing species and uh, things to look at. And so uh, Steve is uh, kind enough to talk, talk about these displays and uh, I'm, I'm happy that uh, we could bring this to you guys on the channel. So if you like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with friends, and uh, check out other stuff Steve's done. He's done a lot of articles and uh, is it mostly editorial. Type. Yeah, in the Amazonas magazine. Yeah, so. Yeah, I did actually an article on this Living Wall Aquarium in Amazonas magazine also. Awesome. So okay. you could read all about it there. It was funny the first time I actually, I mean, I met you here at the shop, and then I was reading Amazonas and I saw your name and I was like, wait a minute. And then I, you know, I had to come in here and ask you, is that, is that, wait, that's, yeah, okay. There aren't too many Waldrons out there. <laughs> yeah, right? So uh, he definitely knows what he's talking about. And as you can see from the tanks I've shown you in the past videos, uh, this is just another uh, thing. And in the future, maybe we'll take a look at some Wabi Kuza setups or something. But for today, that's all. Thank you so much for your time, Yeah, Steve. my pleasure. Take and, care, Alex. Uh, take care, guys. Talk to you later.